हेलो एवरी वन एंड वंस अगेन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल सर्वर ज्ञान माई नेम इज डॉक्टर लॉकेंद्र सिंह एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट कपल ऑफ रैंडम इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन विच आर यूजली आस्ड बाई ए डब्ल्यू एस डेब ऑप्स और मे बी लिनक्स एडमिन इंटरव्यू सो दीज क्वेश्चन आर रिलेटेड टू नेटवर्क लिनक्स ए डब्ल्यू एस एंड अदर थिंग्स सो लेट्स गो थ्रू इट सो द वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज and let me tell you that this question were asked to one of my friend who has somewhere four year of four year of linux and aws admin so this question were asked to him so uh, what is difference between snet and dnet it means source net and dnet so what is net first of all let us have to understand so net means so whenever data travel over net over internet or over network so what happens so when the data travels from source to destination so at same point if netting is there so source ip address is changed so as the picture shows here if like we are talking about snet this means source netting then source ip address will be changed it means all these ip address like one like uh, 192.168.2.1 2.2 2.3 so these ip address will be changed here at this particular source netting it means source ip address will be changed at this particular point over here this is a network device so obviously this is a router so router will replace the header within the ip address within header of packet and it will place its own ip address and the request will be sent outside same here like dnet means destination netting so over here destination ip address will remain same wherever request is going to and source address will be changed so that's the snet and dnet okay so now what is ssl handshake so ssl handshake this is one of the most favorite interview question of all the interviewers reason being the person tries to know that how much do you understand the ssl so let me bring you here a particular session so this is a url of ssl.com this is official site so uh, let us go through this i am just showing you on enter interface reason being because i just want to give all the like uh, credits to this site reason being because uh, the very initial level i also try to understand from this site only so ssl or tls handshake how does it work so first of all a client will send a request to it a request to server so this is a client and this is server all the messages which are written in blue color so these are fr sent from mess uh, client side and green uh, responses from server so client send a message to server says i would like to set up an encrypted session please here is a list of cipher suit and ssl or tls version i am willing to use so ssl is the connection which is initiated from client side it means that the particular browser so every browser supports some different type of ciphers and ciphers are some uh, encrypt in, in encryption protocol or uh, like encryption suit which are used for encrypted connections so client will send all the connection to server now server will say okay uh, hey let's use the particular cipher suit from your list so for example uh, this browser is going this client is going to send uh, all the ciphers which are supported by the by the browser maybe n number of lists so they get agree on us on a common particular uh, cipher also checked and i can use ver uh, version of tls you use so for example if the client is using version tls 1.1 server is also supporting that that only in that case it would happen otherwise if server is supporting 1.1 or maybe 1.0 which client browser is not supporting then there will be no connection so tls version also gets checked during that particular moment then so we are good it means if client is ready to accept this particular condition then there will be a connection now here is my certificate including my public key so server will release its certificate with public keys only public keys are sent to client now what would happen to client it means the device wherever whether it could be mobile it could be tablet it could be pc or any other device whatever you whatever you want to access it from so client verifies server certificate so the certificate which is sent from the server side client will verify it it means that browser will verify it and extract the public key so the public key which server has already sent to client these keys will be, will be accept, uh, like extracted it means unzipped you can call it client uses the public key to encrypt a new pre master key then sends it to server now based on that per, uh, that particular public key client will create a new encrypted key which is known as pre master key so if anyone is going to ask you what is pre master key so you need to understand the person is trying to know the ssl handshake 
fine then sends it back to server so obviously server will receive that now what will server do server uses its private key to key to decrypt the pre master key now what is happening here first of all uh, server sends public key to client client used that particular uh, public key to create a pre master key and that key is sent to server now server is going to decrypt that particular key because right now the the particular server has information that obviously the same private key which i sent to client the client has sent back to me it means the browser is authenticated and has rights or has capability to decrypt my keys okay now what would happen here is uh, client and server both use this pre master key so what is pre master key so pre master key is a combination of uh, server's public key and uh, the particular pair of that key is encrypted by this client fine so this is called shared secret shared secret means browser and uh, the particular server it means the client and the server agreed on the same particular option so that is known as shared secret now what would happen here is client sends a message encrypted per mutual arrived mutually arrived all specifications it means all the specification which were required like like both client and server agreed to 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 communicate on a particular cipher with a particular tcp or tls protocol version and everything is common here and then after they use they are using shared secret over now what would happen here is the server okay this is particular request which is sent to server now server would say the server decrypts and verifies the message or the message which will be sent from client side to server server will decrypt it and will verify the it verified based on that shared secret hey there your encrypted message checks out now i am sending you encrypted message too it means first of all the client will send its detail to server including that uh, based on that particular shared secret so now client will send a uh, encrypted message server will decrypt it and then after it will start sending data to client now the client and server both use the shared secret encryption to protect their communication for rest of the sessions now for example if there is going to be session for multiple session they are going to create multiple time they are going to transfer data so obviously client and server will be using same shared secret so there are three things a person can ask you like what is shared secret so shared secret is a combination of what like pre master key and the uh, pre master key and the public uh, and the particular encryption method what the server has used now what is pre master key so pre master key is a combination of public key of server and the particular encryption method which has the client used to decrypt that particular so that is known as pre master key so keep this in mind like whenever you need to explain this thing so you can now easily explain it i hope so let's move ahead a bit so there is one there is one more question how to assign multiple ip in a single ethernet card on linux so there is a particular file which is known as uh, like slash etc okay this is the configuration file let me make it a bit a bit large for you so usually this is the configuration file if cfg eth0 so you will have to come configure this particular thing there so what is the thing you are going to configure first of all device name then after a boot protocol is static or whether you can keep it dscp whatever you want ip address net ma network mask gateway and on boot yes so it means this will enable the lan card at the time of a startup same thing whenever you need to uh, assign new ip address so you will copy this file and you will create a new file with 0 de delimiter 1 0 delimiter 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 19 so as many as ip address you want you can create do that now device eth0 static and the different ip address you can assign here so this is how you can assign multiple ip address on a single network card okay so uh, what is difference between net gateway and uh, net instance so net gateway net instance both works when you want that you have created a vpc and you want all the clients where you have not assigned public ip address but still you want that you will you should be able to access internet on the top of those instances so in that case you use either net gateway or net instances so the difference between both is so uh, net gateway is a managed service from the side of aws and uh, like you need not to worry about like what is going to be configuration that so you uh, use pay as you go you have to pay, pay you as you use if we talk about net instance so net instance is a type of ac2 instance which comes uh, with pre configuration uh, already done within it and you have to do only one thing source and dash instance check you will have to disable 
fine so there is a particular drawback as well for example if you are going to use any t2 micro t2 is smaller maybe any other type of instance which is very small so network you can become a bottleneck for your internet connections for example if 50 servers are downloading package at the same time so there will be very less speed reason being because all the instances behind it this net instance will be downloading uh, packets of will be downloading data using the this net instance only so that will be that will become a bottleneck at for your network okay so there is one another question how many dns servers can be defined in a linux server so obviously the answer is three so primary secondary and tri tree so there are only three major dns servers which we can assign as a failover for example if first dns server is not responsive so my my uh, linux server will reach out to second one if that is not responsive then it will reach out to third one so keep this in mind this is based on priority and maximum three servers we can assign within a linux box okay for example if you have two interface in linux how can you identify from which network traffic is going outside so there are multiple ways lead, uh, like n load if top command is there if top is a single word so if top command is there ip traf it means ip traffic b mon it means bandwidth monitoring and vn state so there are a couple of commands which you can use moreover you can use wireshark tcp dump so these are the command which you can check that which particular LAN card is being used to send traffic outside of your system so multiple options are there like n load if top ip traf bandwidth monitoring vn stat then after TCP dump and Wireshark. So these are the tools which you can use to figure out or to find out like what particular uh, commands or what particular uh, in interface or LAN card interface is being used to send data outside of your network. Okay. Next question is why swap memory is slow. So what is swap? First of all, let us try to understand. So swap is a particular space which is created on the top of hard disk. Hard disk is always slower than RAM because RAM is a like a very fast memory. So that particular area which is used as RAM by operating system that is known as swap. Then after uh, it is always slower than uh, RAM reason being it is uh, created on the top of hard disk. And as we know hard disk is always slow. So that is why it is so. Okay what should be size of swap. So this is also one of the in most inter mostly asked interview questions about swap. What should be size of it. So size of RAM should be. Side of size of swap should be uh, maximum two time of RAM, but that should not exceed more than 128 GB. Why it is so? So reason being, for example, if you have 128 GB of RAM and you have 128 GB, uh, maybe 256 GB of swap. So that does not make any sense. Reason being, if you are going to uh, manage this particular thing, if you are going to configure this thing, maybe 256 GB of swap is being utilized on the top of your server. It means your applications are running in such a fashion where RAM is more and more required. So rather than performing slow, so you need to increase RAM of your hard, your server. So, so that is why if you are going to configure more than 256 GB of swap, so that is of no use. It means your application, your server and your performance will definitely come down. Fine. So I hope this is it for this video guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a good time. Happy learning from server again. Please do like share and subscribe to my channel and please do write comments comments in comment box if you have any further questions i shall be happy to assist you one more thing if you have any further interview questions which you have uh, recently faced so please do write in comment box i shall collect and i shall create a new video on the top of it thank you so so very much have a good time and happy learning thank you